Hey, good morning. So before I start today, um, you know, I always jump right into it. But before I start today, I want to thank everybody who's been watching Extraordinary Stories from Extraordinary People. Um, I've been having a blast. <clears throat> I've been having a really good time. And it's so interesting because I feel like it is consistently validating the um, the thought that I've always had towards your own personal story and how powerful it is to yourself first. When you tell your story, the way that it impacts yourself first is transformative. And then it goes out and impacts other people. So this week I'm super excited. Tomorrow um, I have my dear friend Casey Martin who's coming on. And Casey Martin has an amazing story about um, being very deeply involved in the church on his way to becoming a pastor, an elder, and his um, journey out of that environment and how life is right now. So definitely want to tune in tomorrow. I'm going to be putting up a um, an announcement for it tomorrow or today. And then on Friday, I have um, a young lady. Her name is Sarah Cruz. She's an energy healer. She's um, She does a lot of intuitive readings. Um, just a fascinating, fascinating story. So that's going to be on Friday. So make sure you turn, tune into both of those. So um, let me just jump into the topic today because, oh, I am so passionate about this topic. So today I'm talking about who or what are you putting your life on hold for? And um, my brain is all over the place when it comes to this topic because I feel like so many of us have these dreams, goals, ambitions, things that we want to do, things that we want to accomplish, places we want to go, um, and we don't. And all of us have different reasonings behind it, you know? Um, like even on my end, from, from a business standpoint, how many people I come in contact with and I tell them what I do, you know, I say, well, I'm a ghostwriter. And uh, so many people say, oh my goodness, I've always wanted to write a book, right? And then what usually comes after that is a litany of excuses or a litany of reasonings, which aren't necessarily bad reasons. Um, you know, every, every story that we tell ourselves, which is backed by the reason why we're not doing something, can usually sound pretty good, right? Well, I really want to do this, but then there's this, 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 and this that's stopping me from it, right? And they're not necessarily bad things. A lot of those things are essentially true. But even though they're true, it still doesn't take away from the fact that there are things that we want to do and we want to accomplish in our lives that we're just not doing. And there's always an excuse as to why we're not doing it. Um, even the concept of right timing, you know, I'm just waiting on the right time. I'm just waiting on this to happen. I'm waiting on this amount of money to hit my bank account. I'm waiting on this opportunity. I'm waiting on until I meet this type of person before I, I do whatever it is that I'm saying that I really want to do. But then my question comes back to what if that never happens? What if the stars never align? What if the perfect timing never happens? What if the right amount of money never hits your bank account? What if you never meet that right person that you've been waiting on? Are you still going to put your life on hold because those, those other variables didn't match? Um, you know, I go to, um, I go to a Weight Watchers meeting every, um, every Saturday morning and I absolutely love it. I've met some of the most wonderful people I've ever met in my life there. But one of the things that, that we talk about a lot is this idea of <clears throat> a lot of times when you're on, the, and I'm just going to do it from a weight loss standpoint and then just connect it to a life standpoint. A lot of times when you're on this weight loss journey, it's like you are waiting to become this certain amount of weight. Like you have a goal. This is where I want to be. And I'm not complete until I hit that goal. So that goal stops me from doing a lot of things in between because I'm thinking I'm not going to be good enough until I hit that goal. So I don't want to go on vacation because if I go on vacation, then I'm going to have to wear a bathing suit and I'm not at my ideal weight. So I'll just hold off until I get to my ideal weight. Or I really want to start dating somebody or I want, I want to get out there and, you know, mingle and meet people, but 
I'm not at my goal weight yet, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait until I hit my goal weight until I live. Because that's essentially what we're doing. In between is life. In between our desires and the perfect scenario sits life, sits days, months, and years that are passing us by as we're waiting for this perfect scenario to come into play. But what if the perfect scenario never comes into play and the days, the weeks, and the months keep going on and you're not living? You know, I'll even take it from a standpoint of um, a romantic partner. You know, sometimes we get we get caught up in wanting to meet someone. Nothing wrong with that. That's, you know, that's a great aspiration. A lot of people really want to find life partners and that's perfectly fine. So in between your desire of wanting a perfect partner and the actual achievement of having the perfect partner, in between those two things, once again, is life. And if you don't live life in between the desire for wanting the partner and getting the partner, then you're just in a holding pattern. Life is passing you by as you're waiting and saying, God, when is this gonna happen? Instead of saying, here's my desire, and on the other end, here's where I know I'm going to get my desires, but I'm not going to put my, my life on hold waiting until I get that desire or waiting until I achieve something. I'm going to live my life in the midst of it. I'm going to travel. I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to take time off. I'm going to whatever it is that you want to do. Like even from a weight loss perspective, I'm going to wear a bikini. I might not be at my goal weight, but I'm not going to put my life on pause because I just I don't have the goals in which I seek. Um, I also want to talk, I, I want to talk now, this might be, I don't know, whatever. I'm not even going to, um, I'm not even going to define it before I talk about it. I have a lot of friends who are parents and who have kids and I don't have kids and I'm not a parent. I've worked with kids, but I don't have, I, I'm not a parent. So this could disqualify my statement and you can take it or leave it for whatever you want. But I think even from a, the perspective of a parent, when you have a kid, you don't have to put your life on hold and then raise your kid. Everything that you are before you had the kid, you still are when you have your child. You're still that. You still have a purpose. You still have things that, that we need from you. You still have a personality. You still have a story to tell. You still have value and worth. And that doesn't just go away because you're raising a human. Now, the way that you go about sharing that and the way that you live that out might change. It might need some tweaking because now you have little humans that you're raise, raising. So your responsibility shift, but it doesn't take away from the essence of you. So it's like when you have children, you don't have to put your life on hold to raise your kids. You don't have to lose your identity while you're raising your children. I believe that those two things can go hand in hand. In fact, you can include your children on that journey of you becoming and you still um, living out your purpose and still impacting your environment and the world and you can include your children in it. I was listening to this podcast, it was so good. So this woman was talking about um, her decision. She had four kids, she made this decision to, um, to divorce her husband. She was living in this like, you know, loveless marriage. So, um, and it wasn't that she didn't respect her husband or um, didn't love him. It was more so missing the romantic elements and the, the connection element. So she decided to divorce her husband and in the midst of it, she met, um, she met and fell in love with the woman. And the, the woman interviewing this woman, she said, how do you feel like that impacted your children? And she said, anything that happens in life is going to come with some form of consequence, whether that be positive or negative. She said, and this is the quote that I had to write down. She said, nothing hurts a child more than the unlived life of a parent. I want to say it again because it's so good. Nothing hurts a child more than the unlived life of a parent. So like we think that we're doing people favors by putting our lives on hold and putting everybody else's needs first and putting everybody else's wants and desires, we put everything that we have on hold for other people sometimes. And we think that we are being selfless when we're doing that. But in fact, we're being selfish because what happens is, is that the people that are closest to us, the people in our lives, they're getting half of us. They're getting a watered down version of us. They're getting they're getting a subdued version of us because we've decided to put a pause on our power, a pause on our 
purpose, a pause on the, the level of passion that we bring to the world. We put a pause on that and then give it to every other person while our life sits in limbo because we're not living. Instead of saying, I am the most important person in my life and I'm going to live my life the way that it's intended at the, at the magnitude that it's intended to be lived. And as a byproduct of that, everybody that's connected to me will be positively be impacted. I won't even have to, I, I won't even have to force it. People will be able to, and if I have kids, they'll be able to look at my life and my life will be the loudest teacher for my kids. Not necessarily just my words, but my life. And that thing that's teaching my kids is never let anybody dull your life. Never put your life on pause for anybody. Live your life and continue to live it despite what happens around you. Um, so whatever, whatever you are desiring in life, um, and, and it's different for, for every person. You know, we're all, we all have goals. We all have things that we want to accomplish. We all have this ideal in our life, right? It's like, um, here's where we are. And then we have this destination mentality. Here's where we want to be, right? And sometimes we mull over it all the time. Like, oh God, like I'm still here because I want to be here. I want to have this. I want to live this type of lifestyle. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting more or living in an abundance lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, is that when we spend so much time in our minds there that we put life on pause here because we're so busy thinking we have to get to that destination. And then when we either get to that destination or fall short of it, we realize, yeah, but I just stopped living. I stopped living and just hoping. Um, I was inspired by to even have this talk because last night I was talking to, I was talking to a friend, I have this vision board on my wall right here right here. It's my vision board. And um, on my vision board at the bottom right hand corner is this full map of Europe with like pictures of traveling. Because ever since I can remember, I've wanted to travel. In fact, when I graduated, um, when I, well, I was in college. And before I graduated, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to the Czech Republic and I'm gonna teach English. So I started doing all this research. Every day, all I would do is research it. And I just wanted to go to the Czech Republic and teach English. That's all I wanted to do. But as I'm doing it and as I'm researching it, it sounds nice, it feels nice, it looks really good. But like I said before, I had a really good narrative in my head for why I couldn't do it. I had, a, I had really great excuses, you know? And those great excuses subdued me from, from continuing to, um, from continuing to pursue that. So I ended up not going to the Czech Republic and teaching English. And every year after that, I always talk about traveling. I always talk about going to Europe. Yeah, I really want to travel. I really want to go to Europe. And I still haven't been outside of the country. So last night, it was almost like for me, it was this wake up moment for me. And I'm like, what am I waiting for? Who am I waiting for? You know, like, I'm going to just continuously have this dream and put it on my, on my vision board, but just never accomplish it because there's, there's life in between my desire and in between the destination of that desire. And that's what, that's the important part. I'm not going to put my life on hold because everything's not in order. Sometimes you just have to make jumps and leaps for things that you're desiring. Sometimes you just have to take a lot of risks and tell yourself, even though this narrative sounds great, it doesn't discount my desire, so I'm just gonna take the risk. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna stop waiting and stop pausing and stop overthinking and stop playing the victim. Um, all the things that we do that just make us pause and not live out the, the dreams, the goals, um, the things that we really wanna accomplish in life. I remember when I was in college and um, for most of my life, my mom worked at a grocery store and she was a cashier and she hated it. She hated it, but she was good at it because my mom, so crazy, my mom's a super introvert, but put her in, put her out in a group of people and she comes alive. It's so weird. Um, so she was a great cashier. She worked there for over 20 years. And um, so she gets to the point where they were doing something with her retirement and she got mad. And she said, I think I'm going to go to college. She was in her 50s when she made this statement. Me and my, my, me and my siblings were in college. All three of us, either two of us or three of us were in college at the time. So we were older. 
And she said, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to be um, an x-ray tech. I've always wanted to be an x-ray tech and I always wanted to go to college and I'm just going to do it. And it was a huge risk. My mom was in her 50s. And when she went to college, she still had to maintain um, maintain working as a cashier. She was still taking care of the house, generally speaking. Um, and it was really difficult. And she took this really big risk. But because she took this really big risk, it took her about three years. She graduated from college. And she was able to, and she still is, working at a hospital doing what she loves. And she no longer has to work as a cashier. Now, if we flip it and we just focus on the fact that my mom was working a job that she didn't like, and she knew that she really wanted to go to college and she always wanted to be an x-ray tech, you know, those are the things that she wanted. But in between those two things, perfect conditions never lined up. Even when she went to college, it wasn't perfect conditions. She wasn't rolling in money, you know, timing wasn't perfect for her. She just took the leap. She took the jump. She did the hard work. And because of that, she's reaping the benefits for it. So said all that to say, wherever you're at in life, stop putting your life on hold for people and for perfect situations and for the narrative that you're telling yourself, all the reasons you're telling yourself that you can't do it, all of the exterior circumstances and environment that you're in. Put all of that aside and start living, start taking action, start doing, stop dreaming about it, stop talking about it. Don't put your life on hold any longer. Press play and just go. Because what's going to happen is, is that you're going to realize that life isn't essentially a destination, right? Life is like a dance. I heard this analogy and I love it. So life isn't essentially a destination because what happens is when we go, when we think of life as a destination and we finally get to that destination, we realize how unfulfilling that destination is and we just pick another destination. So it's like from one to the next and we're never truly fulfilled because we're always trying to get to the next thing. And then we, once again, we're trying to get from one thing to the next and we're putting our life on hold in the midst of that. We're always pursuing and never just living. So I heard this analogy that said that life isn't essentially a, a destination or journey from one destination to another. It's just like a dance. And if you've ever danced, Dancing is fluid. It's organic. You're not thinking about, hey, when's the start of this? And when's, when does this end? And when you're on the dance floor, you're not like looking for markers of where to go from one place to the next. You're just dancing. You're just enjoying. You're moving. You're, you're opening yourself up for the, the music to, to take you as it will. Same as life. Thus is life. It's a dance. It's moving. It's, it's organic. It's flowing. You know, it's not standing, waiting. Um, for the right song to come on. It's not standing and waiting for the right partner to walk in or to be wearing the right outfit. Who cares? Just dance. And that's what I'm saying today. Who cares what you're lacking? Who cares what you don't have? Who cares all the people that are depending upon you? You know what people are depending upon you to be and to do? It's to 100% be you. To stand and walk in your power and the truth of who you are and live that out every single day of your life because that's when we reap the benefits from it. We don't reap the benefits from it when you're living your life for me or for your, for your mom or your dad or for your kids. We don't reap that benefit. That's not because then you're living your life at a, at a dulled version of yourself. So live. Live. Dance. Do it. Whatever it is. Whatever's on your vision board. Whatever's on your goal board. Whatever you're wanting and desiring. Just dance. Dance and do it and enjoy it and stop pausing, stop waiting, stop waiting for the right scenario because the reality is, is that sometimes we're waiting on things that aren't even, they're not even a reality for us. They're just not going to happen. They're not, or they're not even going to happen in the way that we want them to happen. So we might as well dance in the process of it. Um, so today, and this is the, this is what I've been telling myself. And the reason why I can, talk about this and be so passionate is because I have to tell myself this all the time. I am challenged by my own, by my own words because I want to travel to Europe. I want to, I want to travel. I want to, I want to get out of the United States. I want to go. I want to, I want to see the world. And I've, I've wanted to do that for years. And I'm, I'm like, what am I waiting on? Why do I keep putting my life on hold? So I encourage you to do the same thing. What are you waiting on? Press play. 
put the music on, dance. And that's what I tell myself. I tell myself that every day. Amy, today, enjoy the dance. Don't overthink it. Don't focus on where you're lacking. Don't fo focus on what you don't have. Um, keep your mind on where you want to go, but don't let that stop you from where you are right now and enjoying that journey, enjoying that part of the dance, I'll say. So um, have a wonderful Tuesday and enjoy the dance of your life today.